Hello. In this sequence of videos, I'm going to introduce you to some of the general principles of reaction mechanisms involving radicals in organic chemistry. This first video will provide an overview of the types of things uh, that you need to think about. And then in the next several videos, we'll talk about the different types of steps that can occur in a radical mechanism. And then this series will conclude with uh, working through an example uh, of a mechanism for a reaction that you generally cover before you're introduced to radical mechanisms in organic chemistry. Um, so the first thing under general pr principles we want to discuss is that radical mechanism you know, radicals are things that have unpaired electrons. So we're talking about in learning about radical mechanisms, the issue of one electron versus two electrons. And I'm just going to draw a line down here between one and two. Um, reactions that involve one electron at moving at a time are called radical reactions because these are radical reactions. Uh, where two electrons are ionic reactions or polar reactions. Uh, another label used to talk about radical reactions or one electron reactions is the word homolytic. Uh, a homolytic reaction means uh, that when bonds break, each, say, when bonds break, each atom that shares those, that electron pair gets one of the two electrons. I'll, I'll show an example of that here in a moment. Ionic and polar, uh, ionic polar uh, mechanisms tend to be heterolytic, which means that when a bond breaks, one atom in the pair gets both electrons. So, so here's what I mean by that. So let's just pick, um, let's pick an example that's relevant to radical chemistry, uh, which is the, the homolysis of the chlorine-chlorine the bond. A radical process that breaks the chlorine-chlorine chlorine bond is one in where each chlorine atom ends up with one electron from the chlorine-chlorine bond. So let's add chlorine, and the program wants to add that hydrogen there, but hold on a moment. Okay. So here we go. One electron from the, the chlorine-chlorine bond. One goes to one chlorine, the other goes to the other chlorine. If we contrast that by a typical heterolytic process, instead use, of using chlorine, we use hydrogen chloride. When hydrogen chloride, the car, hydrogen chlorine bond breaks, we get a hydrogen cation and a chlorine anion, and or chloride anion. And so, homolytic processes tend to produce uh, radicals. Heterolytic processes produce ions. And you know, I'm going to add in for for the sake of clarity all of the other lone pairs on the chlorine atoms, so you can accurately recognize where all of the uh, electrons are and and come from, so we can keep track. Mm. There we go. The final sort of general consideration that comes from it comes from there being one electron versus two electron are the types of arrows that we use. Uh, One electron reactions or homolytic reactions, radical reactions, use what most people refer to as fish hook arrows. These are arrows with one hook on them. Uh, and the number of hooks is the number of electrons that are being transferred in that mechanism step. 
the, the two hook arrow, which is more common to us and more and sort of we're more we've seen used in a number of reactions, actually means that there are two electrons being transferred in whatever in whatever that arrow is representing. So for radical reactions, we're going to use these fish hook or, or one electron arrows. Another general principle to consider is uh, most radical mechanisms follow a pretty common order of events. And so let's show what that is. And and another in XG. The first step in this general order of events is something called initiation, which is the formation of radicals. Uh, generally, radicals don't exist on their own, so we need to make them somehow. Second is called propagation. The propagation steps are where the key bond forming and breaking happen. The number of radicals that are around tend to stay constant throughout the propagation steps. Um, propagation steps are often cyclic, so something that is generated in one propagation step is used in the next. And then if something is generated in the last propagation step, can go back and be used in the first propagation step. Again, in an upcoming video, we'll do an example, and you'll see how that works. And then the third, what happened here? third type of thing that happens, it's termination. Once all of the propagation is done, there are radicals left over and they undergo some kind of termination step where they, they get or they lose uh, radicals. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, initiation in general, uh, and then we'll move into the different types of steps and radical mechanisms. Thanks for watching.